Hello everybody, this is Brian with the Instructional Tech Coordinator team and in this video we are going to focus on some end of semester, end of trimester or end of year activities that you're going to want to engage in as a teacher kind of to wrap up your your year or to wrap up the course if it happens to be a mid-year ending of that course um, to protect yourself as a teacher and also to make the user experience for students next year a little bit more functional and easy to deal with. So. Um, for a lot of teachers, these are fairly new processes, and we're going to walk you through two steps you would really want to engage in as you're wrapping out the end of a course. One of the first things that you're going to want to do, and you will want to do it in this order, is you will want to create an archive of the course. Uh, I'll go back to, just for a moment, the, the days when... Um, teachers were using red grade books and they were manually entering before we were using online uh, grade books. And so teachers would often enter their grades or they would often submit their grades, but they would hang on to that red grade book. And some of my first year teachers that I worked with had years and years of archived grade books just in the event that a student would ever come back and need to verify their coursework or there was ever any questions. As soon as we went into an online grade book, that no longer became critical uh, because there was a system that was doing a lot of that backing up. But even so, some teachers still wanted to have evidence of the of the learning and would, would print off versions of theirs. Uh, what we're going to look at in archiving a course is, is doing exactly that. We're creating a backup of the course so that we can capture and have a snapshot of all of the different kinds of um, interactions that took place in the course in the event that there's any question about the grades, students need some work later on for some particular reason, or possibly you even want to save it and share it uh, at some point in the future. So that's called archiving a course. Here I am, I am in my Blackboard Learn course, uh, my sandbox course, which I'm going to use to demo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on down here and I am going to come under the packages and utilities area. So if you're a teacher in a course, you should, should see this course management tools and you're going to click on packages and utilities. And these tend to, um, these tend to make some people a little bit unnerved because they seem kind of final and they are. But um, this is a really safe one to do. Export archive course. So we're going to go export archive course. And the, two, the difference between the two, to export a, a course, let's say you were uh, leaving the district and wanted to take the content of that course with you or take it to a different system, you would export that course, but that's not what we're doing here. We're just creating a backup, a, an archive of that course that in the event we would one day need to get into that again or need to have some backup data, we actually would have that available to us. So I am going to click archive course. Now what can we do with this? I recommend that we include the Grade Center history. Even though if we're not using Grade Center a lot, this gives you a more detailed look at their work over time as opposed to necessarily just an end grade that they, they received um, as part of the Blackboard Gradebook. This does not capture the grades that you gave to them in Zangle or Infinite Campus or whatever grading system we're, we're using at that time. The next thing that we're going to click is copy links and include copies of files in the course default directory. That's what mine is defaulted to. That should be what yours is defaulted to. And files outside of the course default directory. I'm going to select copy links and include copies of the files outside of the course default directory. Now I can calculate the size of this to see how big my, my course actually is. I can also click manage package contents and I can go in here and say, you know what, I need everything but this because this is huge and it doesn't need to be downloaded. So you can be far more specific. I would say if you are a beginner at this, I wouldn't worry about doing that though. And the last thing I'm going to do is click submit. And right here you see where it says, this action has been queued and email will be sent when it takes a little bit of time depending on the size of your course it take it can take more time for an archive to be created now before I did this video I did exactly that um, I created an archive and you can create multiple archives throughout the course of a semester or whenever you see the feel the need to do so just to have a backup of your stuff now once that is created I'm going to get an email in my uh, district email that says hey your archive is ready for you and all we need to do is come back into the course go to export archive course and you'll see here that file is ready for you to download so just archiving the course is not actually getting you the full backup it creates the backup package and now you can download that to your computer well how do I do that I hover over the little gray arrow I now can go ahead and open that archive 
and it's going to ask me where I'd like to save it. My recommendation would be you create a new folder called Blackboard Course Archives, and you keep all of your archives in that folder. And I'd also recommend that you give it a consistent file name, Archive Sandbox Spring 2014 maybe hour one, depending on what level you teach, and save. That way you'll be able to go back to it pretty easily if, if you can remember some of those key pieces. If you are ever in a place where you need to uh, answer questions about what happened in the course. So that's called an archive. You want to do that before you remove any students from the course. And that is the process. Now the second thing you're going to want to do is actually, for the benefit of students, um, if you take a look at my course enrollments right now, you can see I've got a lot of courses that I happen to be enrolled in. And that can get really annoying and it can be kind of cumbersome to deal with. So one of the things that we do in this particular case is um, we are going to, for the sake of students, we're going to clean this up a little bit for them. So if, as they go into a new school year or a new set of courses, they're no longer having access to your courses and their My Course List shortens up a bit. So it's a protection for both the teachers and for the students. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into my Sandbox course again, just the same place I was before. I'm going to go into Users and Groups, the same place I went when I enrolled these students, and click on Users. Then all I need to do, and I've got a relatively short list here, is unenroll them. So I select the students that I want to unenroll. And then I simply click Remove Users from Course. Now, there's lots of ways that we can do this. I'm going to show you one way that might be a little faster, especially if you've got 180, 200 students enrolled in a course. What I'll do first is your students are generally sorted by last name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Roll button here, and I'm going to sort by Roll. Then what I'm going to click is Show All. So I scroll to the bottom and I click Show All. Now I click this little checkbox next to the left of Username. And then the key is I uncheck myself and any other teachers that happen to be in that particular course. So I've got a teaching assistant here that I want to keep in and I want to keep myself in. Now I've selected in one or two clicks all of the students in the course. You could certainly do this one by one. And then I click Remove Users from Course. This action is final and cannot be undone, and it's going to take some data with them. Are you sure you want to delete those users? Okay, and now they are removed in the system. This can't be done from a district standpoint. It's not something that, that in fall all of your students will be um, unenrolled for you. This is something that manually has to be done by each teacher in each class, and it's just kind of a housekeeping piece that you do at the end of the year. Remember, the key steps are, though, you first need to archive that course, so you have an exact copy of the course with the students enrolled. So again, that's clicking here and archiving, and then coming into users and, and groups, selecting users, and removing users at that point. So those are the two steps you want to do as you're doing some end of the year, end of the course, end of the trimester kinds of house cleaning so that students have a better experience and so you have a backup copy of that Blackboard data. As always, feel free to send any comments or questions to us, the Instructional Tech Coordinator team here in the School District of Waukesha. Thank you.